been a year now since we made the last still. Um, still got the trusted copper coil which we made in the last video. Um, but we've acquired a free pressure cooker. And this is an old tower pressure cooker. So what we need to do now is to put a better connection as this is my own and it's going to be a more permanent fixture. So what we're going to do is we're going to remove the a little button and we've got a standard 10 millimeter uh, union there's, there's the rest of it and this is going to go in this hole which is a bit too big so what we've done is we've taken a piece of copper tubing 22 mil and we've hammered it flat drilled a hole through and this will give us a washer that will fit our union to the top of the pressure cooker. Once you've drilled the right size hole, uh, you might be lucky and find a washer that's the correct size. I couldn't find a washer. Um, ideally would have liked a stainless steel washer. So you could actually drill through a washer and uh, drill the correct hole for the union. And around the threaded part we're going to add some PTFE tape. As you can see we're getting plenty of help from Spud. I'll bolt out your puppy. <laughs> We've added some PTFE tape around the thread. And now what we need to do is add some silicon around the inside of the copper washer. And this will give us a good seal uh, around the top of the pressure cooker. Here we have the silica. That should give us a nice seal. You can see the silica being squeezed out all the way around. We just need to bolt the underside. And don't over tighten the knot. So only brass thread, you'll strip it. The union costs £1.45, including the postage from eBay. And now we'll need to block off this. Um, which is the other valve. If you're lucky and you have the weights with your pressure cooker then you can just leave the weights on and that will give you the pressure inside. Um, but we'll need to stop this up uh, to prevent uh, leakage of the, uh, the valuable oil. Uh, now we're all good to connect. To block up the, uh, the hole we've used a nail and just wrapped a bit of PTFE tape around it. That should fit snugly into the hole. Nice firm fit, good seal. When you cut the end of your pipe to put the union and the olive on, make sure you remove the burr as this will save you damaging the olive. So very delicate and it will make it easier for, for fitting. So the union goes on first, then the olive. So I've now sealed the um, the weight hole with a nail and PTFE tape from the inside so the head of the nail acts as a seal and we've fitted the, uh, the union it's a little bit difficult just to get this in line but a much better and more secure union than uh, the last one we did with the, uh, the hose pipe Again, the coil is in a bowl full of cold water to cool the cold coil down. People have asked in the, in the last video if it's okay to use plastic pipe. Well, no, it's not because you need the heat transfer from the copper pipe to the water to actually cool the, uh, the steam inside into a liquid so that the, um, the oil comes out at the end. If you use plastic, you'll probably be getting steam spurting out at the end because it's not cooling enough. You'll then need to tighten the, uh, the union with spanners, but, but don't over tighten these. Um, and they don't really, really need to be very tight at all. And you can always go back and pinch them up a little bit if you get a little bit of steam um, seeping out. So if you over tighten these unions, you can uh, damage the, uh, the olive, the seal. Second lavender harvest is underway using a normal bin with a bin liner. I'll just start by nipping off all the heads 
let the heads fall on the floor and pick them up. So quite a bumper crop this year. The bees have all had their fill. And the lavenders in seed. We're using a pair of Wilkinson shears. Just giving them a quick sharpen with a stone. Doing a grand job. Now we need to add our lavender harvest to the uh, pressure cooker. Cramming as much of the lavender you can as you can get in. Um, don't worry about coming level with the top with this particular um, pressure cooker. You've got the the, the, the raised lid, so that will give us the space at the top to prevent any of the uh, of the uh, plant material entering the distillation process. So we've we've crammed in literally crammed in as much as we can. You just need to make sure that all of the stems are, are not not imposing on the uh, on the seal. So tuck those down inside. Oh, we're ready to go. I need to add some water now. Um, I would add, add water up to about this level. Yeah, not an exact science, but. There we go. Just come up to that level there. Using a cast iron drain cover, uh, nice and clean obviously, or any kind of weight, metal weight, we're just putting that inside the, uh, the pressure cooker and that will keep the plant material down. Another great idea. Now we've uh, loaded up our pressure cooker still, just need to uh, Turn the gas on, bring to the bar quickly and as soon as it's boiling or just before the boil turn the gas down as low as you can. The rubber seals on the pressure cooker uh, depend very much on the pressure inside the pressure cooker as we're using a, an outlet. We'll need to compensate this by adding a weight, in this case I'm using a, a G clamp you could also use a hammer, yeah. So add a little bit of weight to the uh, to the pressure cook to make a seal. Okay. The pressure cook is sealed nicely with the weight on the top. Um, I had to push the nail in from the top with some PTFE tape round because the first seal didn't do a good job. That seems to have done a great job. Um, the pipe coming out of the pressure cooker is hot; it will burn you. And the pipe coming from the water bowl, well that's the bowl filled with cold water, um, is cool, it's actually cold to the touch. So what's happening now is that the steam is entering the coil and is being condensed by the, the cold water on the copper tubing and then the liquid will percolate around the tube and come out into the damage on or our collecting vessel. Not quite ready yet. the hydrosol now and we can actually see the oil in the bottom of the, uh, the collecting vessel or in this case the damage on. And the gas needs to be turned down a little bit more just, just to well, so as low as you can get the gas. And this will stop the uh, the pipes from vibrating. Well, hopefully. And we should have a good yield this year. Yeah, spuds come to check out the uh, 
the distillation process and he's become somewhat an expert mm -hmm. you can see quite a, quite a lot of oil is forming already in this first batch so it seems to be working well the hydrosol from the distillation process can be used so don't throw this away and this is the water that the uh, will be move, removing from the oil later um, makes a very good addition to your washing uh, washing liquid it's also very good for washing dogs bedding so it discourages um, the parasites so very very useful stuff mm -hmm. using a nice clear glass what we can do now is take samples at regular interval intervals and this will tell us when the oil stops coming out of the plant material in the, in the pressure cooker so what you need to see is a, a nice healthy batch of oil on top of the uh, on top of the water can see the, uh, the oil on the surface of the water it's a, quite a healthy batch it is really important to keep the water in the bowl cold or cool so constantly replace the jugs. If you let the water get too hot in the bowl then what will happen is the steam will come through and you'll get dark brown uh, liquor as I, as I do when I take my eyes off the game. So the idea is if you keep the water in the bowl cool and you keep the gas on a, a low heat uh, everything should work fine and you'll have a nice clear um, hydrosol stroke distillate together with some clean oil but don't despair because even if it goes brown um, because you've you know you've, you've had the temperature up too high or you've let the bowl the bowl water get too high um, if you let that stand within a few hours you'll see the uh, the oil separate and if you leave it stand for quite a few days um, you'll see that the liquid will go clear again to remove most of the hydrosol and save the oil and this batch where we've, we've actually got some oxidised plant material which don't worry about it, it will settle out um, we use a piece of tube and we'll siphon out the water, the hydrosol into another container and that will concentrate the oil which will then pour into the clean hydrosol uh, so that it will settle out with the rest we need to suck out the, uh, the water from underneath the oil to concentrate the oil and this will enable us to put the next batch into the same bottle so what we do is we push that down and at the same time blow some air through the uh, through the syringe and that will stop the oil being sucked off the tube and literally draw in the the water from underneath the oil so when you pull it out you need to turn it around and repeat and rinse. So we'll just do that again. Again, put a little bit of air in. So you just blow through as you're pushing the tube in. Mm. 
now we can just add the rest of the oil from the last batch. Wash this round inside. Some of the water we've taken out. And just top up. This is the yield that we have, which seems to be a little bit more than we had last year, or quite a bit more actually, which makes sense because there's more of the uh, of the lavender outside now. As you can see, we, we've let it settle, we've let it settle a little bit, but it needs to be settled for about two or three days, probably even longer, to become crystal clear. This was the hydrosol from last year. As you can see, like a good wine, the sediment is all settled to the bottom and the hydrosol is cleared. And we've recuperated a little bit more oil on the surface, which is interesting. Okay, now that we've let our oil settle, that's had three days, and you'll need a funnel, a small funnel, and a bottle to store the oil in. Now, last year, our oil yield was about there, on this bottle. So, using a syringe and a piece of tubing that we've fitted, we can draw up the oil. Good yield. Mm. We'll stop there. That's so we've easily got fifty, probably even fifty five mils. Here's yield mark, and we still have oil to collect from the bottle. So we'll have another go now. Don't worry about sucking any sediment up. from the bottom. And we still have some more oil to, to remove from the top of there. As you can see, we've got an excellent uh, batch of, of oil, at easily 60 millilitres, probably even more than 60 millilitres. Our last batch last year was up to that level on the bottle, 
which would have been about 45 millilitres and that lasted us a whole year with extensive use. We used it for mosquito bites, uh, insect repellent, um, cuts, abrasions, really really useful stuff lavender oil. Um, to remove the last bit um, what we've done is we've added more water to the long neck bottle and this has enabled the oil to come up into the top channel so we'll let that settle out with the sediment then remove the last bit of oil um, hope you've enjoyed watching the video um, I've enjoyed making the video and hope you enjoy using your lavender oil and remember this can also be used for many other plant, uh, plant oils as well Thank you.